Uh, before we get started, I want to share something with you a little funny. It made me laugh. Hopefully, it'll make you guys laugh. Uh, family was getting ready to eat a delicious meal prepared by their mother to celebrate Father's Day. After they prayed over their food, the son asked, Dad, are bugs good to eat? His dad replied, let's not talk about that at the dinner table, son. So after dinner, the father asked his son, now, son, what did you want to ask me? Oh, never mind, the boy said. There was a bug in your suit, but now it's gone. <laughs> That's funny, right? <laughs> I thought that was funny. Well, today I want to talk to you guys about the Father's blessing. As parents, we have the ability to make an impact with our kids like nobody else can. While the mother's role of nurturing and caring is important, Without the father's approval and validation, your child will always feel a void. Amen? I love this quote from Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole. Dr. Cole wrote, Maximize Manhood. I'm going way back now. He said, being a man is an honor, but being a father is a privilege and a daily choice. Amen? It's a daily choice as dads. The Bible declares in Proverbs 22, verse 6, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. It goes on to say in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. We got the moms and the dads in that verse, covered both. And in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22, it says, Listen to your father. Are you listening, kids? And that doesn't matter how old you are, right? Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. They got mom and dad in there again. Every person needs the blessing from their dads, amen? Many of adults still struggle today with low self-esteem, and as a result, they end up working all the time, trying to prove that they're good enough, all because of their dad's lack of affirmation. You know, their father never told them these four important words to many of us, many of us growing up. I'm proud of you. A lot of us didn't hear that growing up. He never made them feel approved, so they're still trying to measure up and gain this approval that can only truly come from dads. Fathers, we have something to give our children that nobody else can give. Other people can tell them how great they are, how special they are, but when you tell them, it carries a whole new weight. As the father, you have the God-given authority to bless your child and bless all your children. Every time you say, I'm proud of you, I love you, you're beautiful or you're handsome, God releases strength, he releases value, he releases confidence and security into your child. And those are just not nice words, but it's what the scripture calls the blessing. There is a father's blessing in the Bible, in the word. Your blessing actually launches your children toward their destiny. You know, sometimes it's easy to get sidetracked or even at odds with their children. Sometimes we have arguments with our kids and we get it, you know, we're not talking to them or whatever. That's happened, you know, with us occasionally. I know it happened with you guys. No surprise there. Uh, but, you know, when they're not doing right, some of us say, you know, when they straighten up, I'll be nicer. When I'm not so busy, I'll spend some more time with our kids. Or they know I'm proud of them. You know, I told them 20 years ago when they learned how to take their first steps or ride a bike, I told them how proud I was of them. I said, you know what? They need to hear that you're proud of them now. They need to hear that you're proud of them today, over and over and over. No matter how old they are, you're the father, so you carry the blessing. Amen? You know, maybe you never received this blessing from your earthly father. Maybe he didn't show you affection or even made you feel valuable. Don't let that same negative cycle get passed down to the next generation. Don't do it. You have the opportunity to flip the script and set a new standard. How do we do that? You start by blessing your children and speaking seeds of greatness into them every single day into their lives. Tell them what they can become and start prophesying their future. Let them know that you're their number one fan, always and always and always. When you see them in the morning, give them a big old hug, even if they're grumpy and don't want one. Every once in a while, you know, some of our kids will walk down the stairs for breakfast and, you know, I'll say, hey, happy, happy, uh, you know, happy Tuesday, happy Wednesday, whatever day it is. Uh, good morning. And they're like, uh, uh, don't hug me, Dad. I haven't eaten yet. I haven't eaten anything yet. And I said, okay, that's cool but I'm just going to give you a hug. I want to let you know I love you. I believe in you. Today's going to be an awesome day. 
it's so important to start the day off right. If you have the opportunity to do that with your kids, I totally recommend doing it. It helps them start the day off right and helps you start the day off right as well. You know, don't think as a man, well, I don't express my feelings. I don't hug. That makes me look weak. Actually, it's just the opposite. When you show your feelings is when you're your strongest. Amen? Real men hug their kids. Real men show affection and make their kids feel valuable. Amen? Real men go out of their way to validate their children and to encourage their children every single day. You know, fathers, our children have been given to us as a gift. We only have them for a certain amount of time. God has entrusted you with his most prized possession, and he's counting on you as a father to give them the father's blessing. Your approval, your love, and your affirmation carries more weight than any other man in their life. Without your blessing, your kids will struggle in areas that they don't have to struggle in. There's a reason people are insecure, angry, and overly competitive. Often the root cause can be traced back to the time that they never got the blessing from their dad. We all want our dad's approval, amen? We want our fathers to say, good job, or at a boy, or at a girl, proud of you guys. And this craving for our father's approval was actually put in us by our creator. God made us that way, whether a man, male or female. But deep down, you know, your children may be 50 years old today, but deep down they're still saying, watch me, dad. Look at what I'm doing. Look at how I'm raising my kids. Look at how I'm excelling in my career. They still want your approval, even though you're married, even though you have kids, and even though you have a family of your own. But dad, here's the good news. It's never too late to bless your kids. You may not have done it for them as they were growing up. Maybe it wasn't the way you were raised. Maybe you weren't shown that example by your dad. But I wonder what would happen if you picked up the phone today and called your son or your daughter. They may be 30, 40, or even 50 years old. And just pick up the phone. You may not have spoken to them in a long time, but just call them and say, hey, I just want to call you and tell you how proud I am of you, how much I love you, how much I, how much I think that you're amazing. You know, your approval can later in life be a turning point for your children. Amen? Your validation of them, their family, their success, and their accomplishments can put an end to issues that they've been struggling with. Maybe you're a father in a single parent situation. You don't have your children with you all the time. You got to split the time between mom and dad. That's, that's uh, you know, something that parents go through on a daily basis. That's okay. You can still give them your blessing even though you're a single parent. Don't take the easy way out and make their mom do everything and say, oh, you know, the mother will take care of it when she has them, when I have them. You know, make sure that you're doing that as the dad and, and not leaving it up just to the mom to do that. Your children need your love. They need your guidance. They need your support. And they need your mentorship more than anything. If a young lady doesn't get the approval from her father, many times she'll try to get that approval from other men. She'll go from relationship to relationship not valuing who she is because she hasn't been valued by the most important male in her life, which is her father. Your daughter, as a little girl, looks up to you as her hero. She thinks you can do everything. She thinks you're Superman, right? She's not gonna feel good about herself until she knows that you think that she's the greatest thing in the world. Remember, you're teaching your daughter how other men should treat her as she's growing up. She's learning from you what love is, what true love is. She's felt her mother's love, but you're her first male love. You're her first boyfriend. It all starts with you, and it's going to be compared to the love that you show her. It's why it's so important, fathers, not only to treat your wife like a queen, but also to treat your daughters like a princess. Amen? Amen. You know what? You're setting the tone for how she'll allow other people to treat her. If you're harsh, rude, or condescending, or don't have time for her, you're teaching her that's how men treat women, and you're giving her the okay to look for somebody just like that. But when you treat her with respect and kindness, you value her, you make her feel loved, important, and honored, that's the standard that she's going to set for all of her future relationships. Amen. You know, our daughters, Danielle and Nicole, did not have their first date with another young man. They had their first date with this young man. It was a couple of years ago. I've taken them to dinner. I've taken them to the mall. Taken them to Chuck E. Cheese when it was still open. Uh, and I've even taken them to Disney World. But I took pictures while they were on the, on the, on the rides. But uh, I've opened the car door for them. I've carried their luggage 
all over the world. Uh, I've told them they're beautiful, they're valuable, they're talented, they're one of a kind, and they're a masterpiece. Make sure you tell that to your children every single day, because it's true. It's so true. I've set a high standard as a dad. The people that they choose to date are going to have a tough act to follow. I made sure of that. Not only are they going to have to be good looking like me. But they're going to have to bring their A game. They're not going to be average or mediocre, but they're going to be someone who brings out my kids' best, my daughter's best, my son's best, people that support them in every way and make them better people. That's what you want for your kids. They're going to have to be a cut above, exceptional, extraordinary people that will treat them like a queen. And dads, if you do it right, she'll know how to weed them out and pick the right one. That's what a father does. A father sets the standard. Don't be harsh with your kids. Don't be too busy for them. If you don't tell your daughter how beautiful she is, don't be surprised if she finds another young man to tell her how beautiful she is. She's going to be, if you don't tell her, somebody will, and you want to make sure you're that person. If you don't make your children feel special every day, they're going to go out and try to fill that void with something or someone, a void that only you can fill as a dad. In the scripture, there was a father named Jesse who had eight sons. When the prophet Samuel came to his house to choose one of those sons as the next king of Israel, Jesse's youngest son, David, was out in the shepherd's fields tending the sheep. Jesse didn't even invite David in. He thought, he doesn't even have a chance. He's too young and inexperienced. So when Samuel looked at all the other seven boys, he said, "Uh uh-uh, it's none of these guys. He asked Jesse if he had another son. Jesse was so surprised, he said, yes, David is my youngest but he's out taking care of the sheep. But the moment that Samuel saw David, he said, that is the next king of Israel. Here's my point. Jesse had a king in his house, and he didn't even recognize it. He had one of the greatest men that would ever live, but he didn't see it. He just looked on the outside, saw his size, he saw his ability and his inexperience. He couldn't see the seas of greatness on the inside of his own son. He didn't see the giant killer, the army general, the skilled musician, and the history maker. It's possible, like Jesse, you might have a king or queen in your house and not even recognize it. You don't recognize the gifts that God's put in your kids. You could be raising the next giant killer, the next army general, the next David, and the next history maker. Amen? All they need is your blessing, your encouragement, and to know that you believe in them, that you're cheering them on, and that you're their number one fan. In 2009, a young man named Jonathan Sanchez was a starting pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. We're going to talk about some baseball, my favorite sport. Amen? Yeah. Giants are a pretty good team. They're okay. Jonathan has been doing okay, but he started struggling as a new pitcher. Eventually, he was sent down to the bullpen. That's where you go to hang out, second string, third string, for all the non-baseball fans in the room. Um, They sent him down to the bullpen, and then here's what happened. When the star pitcher of the Giants... Randy Johnson, who used to throw like 100 miles an hour plus, hurt his shoulder, they put Jonathan back in the starting rotation. And it just so happened that Jonathan's father had flown in from Puerto Rico that day to watch him pitch for the very first time in the major leagues. And with his father up there in the stands, Jonathan pitched the game of his lifetime. He struck out a career high, 11 batters. That's good. That's good. 11 batters is good. And he didn't allow one hit. It was the first no-hitter in 33 years for the San Francisco Giants. After the game, the first one in the dugout to congratulate Jonathan was his dad. Jonathan said later on, I was so pumped to know that my father was watching me pitch for the very first time. You know, it wasn't a coincidence that he pitched the game of his life the first time that his father watched him. The blessing kicked in because his dad was in the room. His dad was in the stands. Fathers, when your children know that you're watching them, you believe in them, and you're cheering them on, that's going to give them an extra boost to rise higher, to go further, and to accomplish things that they never thought that they could accomplish. Amen? Amen. You know, and I realize that not everybody got this blessing from their dad. Some people lost their dad early in life. I understand. Some of our, your dads are not here with us any longer. They're up in heaven looking, looking over us as a glad, with a great cloud of witnesses. Uh, half the children today are being raised in fatherless homes. That's a true, true statistic. Maybe your dad was around, but he wasn't a good influence, and he made it harder on you. Notice with David, even though his father didn't believe in him, 
that still didn't change David's destiny. What God had planned for David's life could not be stopped by how his father raised him. This is important. Don't ever use the way you were raised as an excuse for what God can or cannot do in your life. Amen? Amen. Don't say, I didn't get the blessing, so now I know why I'm stuck. Now I know why I can't accomplish my dreams. No, what you did or did not get is not a surprise to God. He ain't surprised by it. He knew it was going to happen. He knows all things. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. Uh, you may have had your father involved in your life growing up. You might not have had him. But God said in Psalm 68 that he will be a father to the fatherless. Amen? God will be your father. He will watch over you in a special way, and he'll get you to where you're supposed to be no matter what you've gone through and no matter how you've been raised. You know, I read a story about a little boy that grew up with a single parent mother in the hills of Tennessee. Back then, especially in that area, children that were born to unwed mothers were really looked down upon. At three years old, the neighbors wouldn't let him play with their kids. They would say things like, what's he doing in our town? Who's his father anyway? He'd go up to the local store on Saturdays with his mom, and people would say mean things loud enough so that he could hear it. They'd say, there he is again. Did you ever find out what, where his father's at or who his father is? Really, really mean things. He grew up insecure, always feeling like there was something wrong with him. At 12 years old, a new young minister moved into town who was very dynamic and talented. This boy had never been to church. He wanted, so he wanted to check it out. One day he decided to go all by himself to see what all the excitement was about with the new minister that just moved into town. He went late, sat in the back so nobody would notice him hoping that nobody would see him. That day, he felt a love and acceptance like he had never felt before. He planned on leaving early, but he got so caught up in the message and what the minister was saying before he knew it, the sermon was over and the service was over. So as he was leaving, the young minister was greeting everyone at the door, saying, hey, you know, introducing himself to everybody, and he saw the young boy go by him all by himself. And of course, he didn't know anything about him, and innocently, this minister said, son... Whose child are you? The whole place grew completely silent. This was the question they'd all been wanting to ask. Who's his dad? Who's his daddy? The boy put his head down, didn't know what to say. The minister sensed that something was wrong. So he looked at the boy and he said, oh, I know whose child you are. I can see the resemblance so strongly. You're a child of the almighty God. Amen. That day, yes, amen. That day was a turning point in the young boy's life. At that point, chains of insecurity and inferiority just broke off of him for the very first time. And you know what? 30 years later, that young boy, his name is Ben Hooper, was elected the governor of the state of Tennessee. If you were to ask him, Ben would tell you the day he really got elected was the day that that minister told him who his father was. Amen? Amen. You know, a lot of people today grow up without fathers. I wish that wasn't the case. But that's, if that's you, let me tell you what that minister told Ben Hooper. Your father is almighty God. He's chosen you. He's called you, and he set you apart. You didn't get here by accident. You didn't just happen to show up, but God actually breathed his life into you. He created you. You have a destiny to fulfill and an assignment that only you can accomplish. Church, life is short. Make sure you give your children the blessing. It's never too late. You can pick up the phone, call your son or your daughter, and tell them how proud you are of them. It never gets old. Trust me, it never gets old. And if you didn't get the blessing, or if your earthly father wasn't around, remember, God is your father, just like he was Ben Hooper's father. He didn't know who his father was. He, God put his blessing on you, and I believe and declare, because of that blessing, you're going to rise higher, you're going to accomplish your dreams, and you're going to set a new standard for your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Your children are going to be mighty in the land in Jesus' name, and I believe that and declare that right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we close, I want all of us, not just the dads, to make a declaration today based on the word of God. I believe that when we make declarations about ourselves that are based on who God says we are, we can use our words to partner with the will of God and see him move in our lives. Yes. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Proverbs 18.21 puts it this way. The power of death and life is in the tongue. Your words can either speak life 
or your words can speak death. So today, let's speak life over our lives and over any situation that you may be going through. And as this come up, comes up on the screen, let's go ahead and say this together on the count of three. One, two, three. I am blessed, prosperous, redeemed, forgiven, talented, creative, confident, secure, disciplined, focused, prepared, qualified, motivated, valuable, free, determined, equipped, empowered, anointed, accepted, and approved. Not average, not mediocre, for I am the child of the Most High God, and I will become all that I was created to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before we close our service today, I want to pray for the fathers. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for all the fathers in this room. And for those not with us today, thank you for the example fathers give us every single day at their best of sacrificial, other-centered love. Thank you, God. For giving us fathers to be servant-hearted leaders in our homes, displaying both strength and humility. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. God, right now we pray that these fathers would find their worth, that they would find their identity, that they would find their hope first and foremost in being your child, in being known by you, loved by you, and held by you. Teach these fathers to seek you first, God. Build them up by the power of your Holy Spirit to be humble, to be wise, to be pure, to be diligent men of God. Teach them to love their families, to love their church, and to love you. Thank you, God. For those still raising children in their home, give them wisdom in extending both grace and discipline. Give them opportunities to point to your truth and grace in ways that their kids can understand. And may all of our children come to know, love, and trust you in the name of Jesus. While you continue to pray, I want to ask all of you a question. If you die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? Maybe you're watching today online or you're in a building today somewhere and there's something drawing you toward God. You know what that is? That's the love of God. That's the love of Jesus drawing you to him. We believe that Jesus is the son of God. He was perfect in every way and he died in our place on a cross for the forgiveness of all of our sins. Then God raised Jesus from the dead so that anyone and this includes you. Anyone who calls on the name of Jesus, that person would be saved. What does that mean? All of your sins are forgiven forever. You don't just become a better version of you. You become a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. The old is gone and the new has come in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible declares in Romans 10, verses 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I admit that I am not right with you and I wanna be right with you. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. The Bible says if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. So right now, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. At Life Church, let's give God praise for everyone who prayed that prayer today. Amen, amen, amen.